Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be to everyone here. Um, I'm here another day at Speaker's Corner, another Sunday. We're here today with a Danish, a lovely Danish lady. Her name is? Penilla. Penilla. So Penilla, if you could just say hi to our viewers. Hi. Um, so Penilla, I've just seen her stop, stop. Uh, she's from Denmark. You've, you're here on holiday, are you? Yeah, just to visit. Yeah. So just a little bit about your background, if okay, just to, just to contextualize this. No, I don't know what to say. Uh, so in terms of like belief or creed? Yeah, um, from a Christian background, uh, I don't have any, like, I go to church on holidays, but I don't, okay. I don't really practice Christianity. Yeah. And uh, one of our brothers pulled, pulled you over and he pulled me over and said that interestingly enough, your beliefs are very similar to us, more so than the Christians. So I just wanted to know a little bit about what you do believe in, in essence. Yeah. I do believe there's a God, one God, yeah. um, not so much Jesus, I don't know, I'm not convinced of Jesus yet, yeah. anyways. I believe in a God and I believe that there's one God for all people. I don't label myself with, with religions, I believe yeah. there's one God and you should follow some rules and treat other people with respect, no matter what the religion is. I yeah. just believe there's a God and the God loves all of us. and. Yeah, we need to follow some guidelines to be respected by God. Absolutely, and and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, if I asked a Muslim lady instead of yourself the same question, I would have received the same answer. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah, similarities to... Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if I was to ask you, uh, Penilla, Penilla, yeah? Penilla, yeah. Penilla. 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 If I was to ask you, Penilla, about your understanding of Islam, what could you tell me that you know about Islam? I don't know much. We have, uh, we have and it's not a trick question. I just want to know, just for understanding yeah, purposes. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. I know about Muhammad and Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Yeah, and I know about Allah, but not. I don't know right. the Quran. I okay. Know passage of okay. Quran to talk from school, but that's it. <laughs> right. What I would like to do, if it's okay with you, is just to talk to you a little bit about Islam. And, you know, if it becomes too much for you, you can always tell me to stop and shut up or, mm. you know, just ask me if you have any questions and we can go over a few things, yeah? So firstly, I just wanted to talk to you about who Muhammad, peace be upon him, is for us uh, in comparison to who Jesus, peace be upon him, was for us, yeah? And the prophets before. So, I mean, of course, as a coming from a Christian background, I'm sure that you've heard of the names like Moses, Abraham, David, yeah, yeah. Noah, Adam. All of these, Solomon, Jesus, yeah, yeah, all, yeah. and they all came with one universal message. And we believe that the message that they came with is, as you said, there's no deity worthy of worship, but God alone, yeah. almighty God alone. And we call him as Muslims, Allah. Yeah. Even, even people who are not Muslim, they use the word Allah. It's yeah. an Arabic, Arabic word. Arabic, yeah. The one who is worthy of worship, Allah. Um, and then similarly, these prophets, they all came down with certain miracles from God. Do you believe in the miracles that these prophets came down with? For example, um, Solomon, Prophet Solomon, he was given the ability, and it's also in biblical scripture as well, that he was able to communicate with uh, animals, he communicated with spirits, and they listened to him. They listened and obeyed him under God. Um, prophets like Abraham, he was thrown by the, by, the, by the persecuting disbelievers into a fire, and he said a few words on his tongue, which was, and in Arabic it's Hasbin Allah wa Ni'mal Wakeel, or an English translation of this is Allah is sufficient for us and He's the best disposal of our affairs. And from this, Allah took that fire and He made it cool. He ordered the fire that He created to be cool. And this is one of the miracles that, that Abraham came with, and Jews and um, Christians, they, they testify to that as well. I mean, it's part of scripture. Then you've got prophets like Jesus, and Jesus, He came with many miracles. For example, He was able to cure the sick. You know, he brought he brought life and stuff like this. Yeah. Now we as Muslims accept this as well from Jesus, peace be upon him too. But we say it's by the will of Allah and not by the will of Himself. Um, in Matthew 7:21 to Matthew 7:24, part of the biblical scripture, Jesus uh, Jesus is told that on the day when He comes down, when He comes back, the people will say, Lord, Lord, is it not? It, was it not in Your name that we did we not prophesy in Your name? and cast out evil spirits in your name and in your name perform many miracles. And Jesus will turn to them and say, and this is in the Bible, he will turn to them and say plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Because Jesus himself, just like all of the prophets before, he worships one God. As you said, you worship one God, you know. He testified that there's only one God and that is the God above everything in heaven. And he never ascribed to himself lordship. He ascribed to himself prophet, yeah, yeah, prophecy. Yeah, yeah. And you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So after Jesus came and all of these prophets came and they came with their miracles and these miracles were used as tests for those, for the people to either follow him or to deny him. Even in the Quran, it speaks about Jesus. Um, I want to read to you something about in the Quran about Jesus, if you're okay with that. Yeah. Thank you very much for your patience.
Oh, so you're very. I just had to text. She's still alive. Oh yes, she's <laughs> all right. She's she looks. She's smiling. She's all right. So um, I just want to read the first couple of verses from Surah Al Kaf. If you just bear with me, uh, so it's the Surah of the Cave. So the people of the cave. If you just bear with me. And bless you for your for your patience. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know you. I know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. By the time we finish, yeah. she'll be done. Hopefully, yeah. So in Surah Al Kaf, and this is from the first uh, verse. I'm going to read down just to the fifth. Yeah, yeah. Is that okay with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So in the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful, all the praises and thanks be to Allah, who has sent down to His slave Muhammad, the Prophet that came after Jesus, the book, the Quran, and has not placed therein any crookedness. He has made it straight to give warning to the disbelievers of a severe punishment from him and to give glad tidings to the believers in brackets, though, you know, the ones who believe in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, who work righteous deeds. So you said obviously, you know, about that we have to come here and we have a certain law that we need to follow. They work righteous deeds that they shall have a fair reward, meaning paradise. They shall abide therein forever. And to warn those who say Allah has begotten a son. So meaning like when they say Jesus begotten son, no knowledge have they of such a thing, nor had their fathers. Mighty is the word that comes out of their mouths. They utter nothing but a lie. You know, and then when you go back to biblical scriptures, I mean, we're here on a weekly basis and we don't do it in a malicious way, but we speak to a lot of Christians, for example, and about how that their religion has been altered and how it's been changed. And we invite people to come back to the true monotheism that existed before when Jesus was going and preaching that there's only one God. Jesus in, in, in the Bible, he says, I go back to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Jesus also said, my father is greater than I. Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed to God. Jesus also says in the Bible, but you know, a lot of Christians try and take it out of context. That it says that Jesus was hurt. He, you know, he was praying to God to be saved from sac sacrifice, from the crucifix, sorry. And he was hurt because of his reverent submission. Nowhere in the Bible does Jesus ever refer to himself as God. And there's so many, there's so many versions of the Bible. Yeah, the I, I haven't read the Bible. Right? <laughs> okay. I mean, the Bible is so many times longer than the Quran itself. There's so many opportunity in the Bible where Jesus could have referred to himself as God, but he never did it. Yet, he always refers to the Father in heaven as God. Now, the Quran is a book that came 1400 years um, earlier through our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Um, what, what do you know about our Prophet Muhammad, if anything? Not much. Not much. No, May I tell you a little about him? Yeah, just tell Fantastic, because I know you're burning, <laughs> you're burning time. Yeah? Burning All right, cool. Anyway. So, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He was a man that came from uh, a noble family in the Arabian Peninsula um, in, of Mecca, in the Valley of Mecca. Mecca itself is literally central to the earth. It's like right bang in the center of the earth. And interestingly enough, the Kaaba, you know, the house that the, that the Muslims pray towards. It's interestingly enough, it is literally set, uh, foot for foot, meter for meter, centimeter for centimeter. It is bang in the middle of the earth, which is an amazing phenomena in itself. I don't know how they would, unless this was by divine knowledge, how they could bring such, such, a, such a knowledge. But geographically and statistically speaking, it is. Now, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a man that could neither read nor write. Um, he was a man who was sent from a young age to the desert um, and he was looked after by a Bedouin lady in a Bedouin family. Her name was Halima and she looked after him for a few years um, and then he went back to the city. He came from a noble family, a family that had, a family that had, uh, I wouldn't say royalty, but a family who were very well respected. Um, however, these people that were in his family and the people around him in the village, they all used to worship statue idols. You know, so they would take the trees or the statue idols. They used to have many gods and they will pray to these gods. They'll have a god of war, a god of peace, a god of this, a god of that. Just like the Greek yeah. kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, examples. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, to stay away from this. And he never used to worship gods himself. He went to a mountain and there's a cave inside there. It's called Hira. And he used to ponder upon this. People in, in his uh, village down below, even though he stayed away from the idol worship, they knew him as two things, the truthful and the trustworthy. as sadiq wal amin in Arabic, truthful and the trustworthy. This is what they knew Muhammad peace be upon him as, our Prophet, yeah? 
He was also a shepherd, just like just like the prophets before him. I know Jesus was a carpenter, yeah. but just like many of the prophets before, he was a shepherd. And this is yeah. this is interesting. Why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we believe that has always has always given uh, you know this this job to the people that he's chosen to be prophets, shepherds, a shepherd, someone who looks after their sheep. Sheep are sheep are animals by nature that conform, you know. And a shepherd is someone who has to look over them. He has to watch over his sheep, you know. So I mean, from young age, Muhammad peace be upon him, obviously, he acquired these certain skills, this skill set. And later on, did he not know that he was going to be chosen? So basically, what happened was Pamela. And thank you again for being patient. Yeah. He was in this cave and he was wondering and pondering about life, you know. And, they, and the, where the famous proverb came from, English proverb, a man can see very well from a mountain. You know, there's a proverb in English, a man can see a lot from a mountain, for example. And at one time when he was sitting there and reflecting, it was said that an angel came to him and it was Angel Gabriel. And this is what we have from our, script, from our scripture, yeah. An angel Gabriel said to him, Iqra, read. And he said, I can't read. And he said that every time he turned, on every corner of his eye, he could see Angel Gabriel standing there. And he said, I can't read. And Angel Gabriel said again, Iqra, read. And he said, I cannot read. I am, I am not of the learned. And this is, by the way, it says this in the Bible as well, about an up and coming prophet that says, I am not of the learned. And then Angel Gabriel said, Iqra, Iqra bismi rabbik alladhi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq. Read in the name of your Lord who created you from a single clot of blood. Read, who taught man what he did not know. Read. And this was the first revelation that came from, from God to Angel Gabriel to Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was married to a woman 50 years his senior, Khadija at the time. She was a famous businesswoman, very noble as well in her trade and very noble in personality and character. And he ran home to her and he was shivering under the blankets. And you know, he told her about this story and she, she then became the first believer of Islam. He wasn't sure still what was going on, but after that, he started receiving direct revelation from God. Anyway, thank you for that. That's just a little bit about our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. It was 23 years after, the, after that first revelation that he lived and he, pre he preached um, that there's no deity worthy of worship but God, like what you said when, when we first started our discussion. Um, now, as Muslims, we believe in six, six pillars of faith that actually entice, hold our religion together, our belief. Um, so I wanted to ask you, interestingly enough, which one of them would you say that you can believe in and which ones you think are far-fetched, you can't believe in, yeah? Mm. So the first is belief in one God. Yeah, I believe in that. I belief in the angels of God. I don't know so much. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So to believe in the angels of God, it would be conditional upon a scripture that you would have to know that the scripture is divine and from God itself if it said that there's angels from God, but after you've accepted a scripture, then you would probably believe, okay, cool. If you've accepted the scripture, you'd accept anything inside it, right? Yeah. Agreeable? Yeah, angels are cool, but yeah. Yeah, cool. I don't know. <laughs> no problem. So then the third one is to believe in the prophets and messengers of God. So for like Solomon, David, Moses, Noah, Aaron, Abraham, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Yeah. Believe in them? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Fantastic. And then to believe in the books, in the scriptures that they came with. So we believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with the Quran. Before him, it was Jesus. He came with the Old Testament, the Injil. Before him was Moses, Ten Commandments. Before him, you got David, Psalms of David. You know, all of these prophets, they came with messengers, so to speak. They came with all of these messengers. Yeah, I believe in yeah. Fantastic, bless you. Then the fifth one is to believe in a day of judgment, including a heaven and a hellfire. Yeah, I believe in, yeah, judgment. Fantastic. I believe, believe in one God. One God and, Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And then the sixth one we take is predestiny, to believe that divine decree, that everything is already written, God is the all-knowing. No, I don't believe in faith or destiny. I you don't? You create your own, and of course God has a plan, but I don't know. I believe that people create their own destiny, and the choices they make gets us to where we are, okay. not as a divine God sure. choosing for us. Do you believe that God knows? Do you believe that God knew that I'm going to go like this? No, I don't believe it. Okay. Okay, so do you believe that the so God is not all knowing? No, not about all everyday stuff. He's all knowing when it comes to the end, but I don't believe it's just like sit like a brain and control every human being on earth to do something consistent. Okay. So it's an interesting theory that you've got now. I mean the theory that you've got is definitely doesn't stem from original Christian belief, just from what you've said. 
and it's definitely not Islamic itself because as Muslims we believe that God is the all-knowing um, so we believe that God is the all-knowing and that there's nothing that God doesn't know and there's nothing that we that we have as an ability over God so for example say me and you were in a room together and I handed you uh, a silver coin and there was no one there and there's no cameras there there's not none of these going on yeah and we say oh look we have a knowledge now between us that God doesn't know. No, I don't believe that. Because I know that God sees everything. I just don't believe He goes down and makes us do anything. Right. That, yeah, I believe He sees it, but don't act on it. Okay. okay. Now, what we believe as Muslims, actually, then, in now that you've clarified it, is not different. Is yeah, it's not actually different to what we believe as Muslims. What we believe is that God has not controlled us to the fact that he hasn't given us free will and choice. We believe that God has created us. He is the all-knowing, that he's created every knowledge in this world and he alone knows this knowledge, yeah? And whatever knowledge he's allowed for the angels to know and whatever knowledge he's allowed for the prophets to know and whatever knowledge he's allowed for each of us individually to know, yeah? But he does know everything and every choice that we are going to make during our lives because he is the one who has written it all and he is the all, he is the all power, he is the all able. He's the all-knowing, the all-seeing, the all-hearing. This is Allah, this is who we believe. Our Lord and Master, He knows everything, but He allows free choice. Yeah, so you can agree with that. Alhamdulillah, so we are on the same page regarding that. We believe, and this is why, in regards to this free choice, this is why we believe that there's a paradise and a hellfire. You got your reward, you know, you got your biscuit and your sweet, or you got your slap on the wrist, so to speak. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't believe in hell. I believe in a bad place for people okay. who treat other people bad. Cool. But also that's what we need, a place for yeah. Yeah, changing yeah. who you are. And, yeah. Penilla, what I would like to ask is, okay, so what is it that you, you came from a Christian background, yes? Yeah. What was it that made you lean away from Christian faith? I don't know, I'm coming from a Christian background because most Danish people say they come from a Christian background. Yeah. Everyone practices it. My parents didn't practice it. Okay. Like, so it was because of okay. I don't, I'm not sure my parents even believe in Jesus either. All <laughs> oh, right. They okay. believe in, in God and yeah, can uh, relate them as a label, not yeah. uh, something. To but importantly enough, you believe that God is to be worshipped alone, and there's nothing like Him. Yeah, I believe in that. Fantastic. Yeah. Now we are the only religion in the world up until now that we we can honestly, truly say through our own scripture, the Quran, and through our own application of practice of the scripture that we worship God alone and we ascribe no partners with Him in terms of His names and attributes. Any thoughts on that? No, not really. Okay. It's again, it's a label, it's a religion. Yeah, yeah. okay, sure. Now, our Prophet, peace be upon him, we go by his, set, by his stories as well. So Allah has left with us the Quran, which, which is compiled of, which is com a compilation of 140 chapters. Very clear, very poetic, very elegant, and no one has ever been able to create a text that is just like it in terms of its etiquette, so to speak, yeah, and language, level of language, yeah. And it originally came in classical Arabic. Now you can find it translated in many different languages, yeah. Now, it's a book that speaks about many truths. And you know, for example, the reason why certain prophets were believed in before was because of the miracles that they came with. Some prophets even, the, the people around the prophets were challenged. So for example, we have a prophet called Salih. I don't know what his name is in the Bible. Does anyone know what Prophet Salih is in the Bible? Is he not in the Bible at all? I beg your pardon. So it was from the people of Thamud. And Thamud is a place uh, that they used to make a lot of big uh, houses and stuff on in the mountains and on mountains, yeah? Now Prophet Salih was a prophet. He came to say, there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah. And this is what God has told me to tell you. This is what God uh, tells us, sorry. Now, um, the people challenged Prophet Salih and they said, right, we will follow your God if you can do one thing, out of this rock, and there was a rock there, out of this rock, can you make a camel that is, I believe, 10 months pregnant, massive in structure, and uh, Prophet Saleh said, he prayed to God, and God did it for them. Out of, the ca out of this uh, rock came a pregnant camel, and the camel gave birth, and it had a baby camel. The people were not satisfied, they killed the camel. So they killed the camel just out of their arrogance to God and they continued their idol worship and whatever it was, yeah? God caused just a sound and they had warnings and warnings and warnings and they were even plotting to kill our Prophet Saleh, peace be upon him. God created a sound wave 
through lightning and thunder or whatever it may be, a sound wave that killed these people, just a sound wave. But I mean, that's just, just to show that through time, there's always going to be prophets who, uh, there's always going to be people around prophets who come with arrogance. Even the people around Jesus. Because he's the one true Lord, and I come with you with the same with the same message that my that prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, the prophet before me came with, and prophet Moses, and prophet Abraham, and prophet David, and all of these prophets. And that message is that I'm preaching to you guys is that there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah alone. And then he's made a conclusion in this, yeah, and that Muhammad, I myself, Muhammad, peace be upon him, am the prophet and messenger of God, and I come with the Quran. So all of the prophets before, they never went to testify that they were the final prophet, but Prophet Muhammad did. And the reason why he came with a book now that was complete, it was free from any crookedness. And there was a promise in the Quran that there will not be any crookedness to be found in the, in the text of the Quran. And it's the same book that we had then until now. And it's the only book that has never been changed. And this is, you know, all of these prophets, they came down with the miracles. So the miracle of Muhammad wasn't that he put a stake in water and the water went like that, like Moses. It wasn't that the fact that he lived like Yunus or Yonah, Jonah in the, in, the whale, in the whale of a belly. It wasn't the fact like he, he had powers like Jesus Christ. It wasn't. He had the Quran. And the Quran is a book that speaks about so many miracles. It speaks about the way that the moon is a reflected light of the sun. It speaks about the stages of embryology. It speaks and it has so many numerical values and miracles and scientific values and miracles inside the text of the Quran. Putting aside all of the people that try and debunk the Quran, we come here on a weekly basis. My knowledge may not be right up there, but what I do speak is through certainty and no one can ever debunk it. Why? Because I'm not here to be judged as a person. I'm here for people to speak to me.